It was one of the most intriguing and unexpected stories of the pandemic, that CCTV footage of the then Health Secretary Matt Hancock kissing his colleague, now girlfriend, Gina Colodangelo. And Matt, complete with his roll neck, is once again revealing what happened. Um, we fell in love. And, you know, that's something that, that, that was completely outside of my control. I regret the, you know, the the pain that that's caused and the very, very, very public nature. It all happened quite, it all happened quite quickly. Katie, um, uh, it's a podcast, isn't it, with Stephen? It's Stephen Bartlett's podcast, and you listened to it last night. Yeah, Diary of a CEO. So I'm a regular listener to the podcast, and, and what Stephen does is he has a, a chat with people that really goes quite in-depth. You know, it's a good two-hour interview, and he'll always get the human side out of them. Often people will display their vulnerabilities, and I think it's rare that politicians do this. They don't really go on podcasts. So I thought it was quite interesting that Matt Hancock agreed to do this, and, you know, the, the role net was giving milk tray vibes to me as well. <laughs> 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 but there were points when I was listening to it and I started to empathise and think, do you know what, I wouldn't have wanted that job at that time to be health secretary. He was under immense pressure. Marriages do break down. People do have affairs. You know, that, that is life. But then, you know, that was a few moments. And then I still go back to that thought of women had miscarriages alone in hospital because partners weren't allowed in. People's parents died alone in, in care homes. And I can't get away from that thought. And here was Matt telling us that his only crime was, you know, falling in love and not respecting social distancing. And he went into this huge amounts of detail when he didn't need to, you know, and he's got children at school. You know, he's still got his ex-wife and this has been a very much a public humiliation. And I just think that detail was unnecessary for what really felt like a, a bit of a rebrand for him because, you know, Stephen's podcast is very popular. There's going to be all kinds of different people listening to that. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's going to be hard for his children to go to school on Monday after that's been Yeah, but equally there. hard for his children to go to school, in his opinion, when so much has been written about it. It's constantly written about and what yeah. he did. And, and maybe this was his way of trying to explain to everyone, his genuine feelings, because, you know, mm. there's also things been written about him that he's absolutely denied that are, aren't true. Mm -hmm. We all know that happens. So maybe it was his way of saying, finally, I get a chance for people to hear, whether they agree with it or not, my side of the story, mm. including mm. his children, although I'm sure his children mm. weren't bothered about listening to that. But, yeah. you know what I mean? It could be his way and... I don't know. I'm not excusing anything he did, but, God, we've all done things, haven't we, or made mistakes, and all you can say is sorry. And people go, well, why do you keep talking about it so publicly? It's because every time he's in the public, they're asking. Yeah. They will always ask. That, that, all of that episode will stay with him forever. Every time yeah. he's mentioned, <clears throat> it will always go back. Yeah, but the way to end it would be to say, I'm not talking about it anymore. I accept that... It affects my children and my ex-wife. They're all part of it too, and they didn't ask to be part of it, a little bit like Adele's last album when she happened to invoke her child and her ex-husband all in the way, you know, by saying they inspired her songs. And you think, mm, but is that fair? I think there's only one word for this podcast, shameless. Yeah. Shameless! Here's a politician, a career politician, who, you know, doesn't know what else to do outside politics, who clearly wants to get back into the Cabinet and will stop at nothing. I mean, the other week, that picture of him coming out of the Serpentine <laughs> after an in impromptu <laughs> swim, I mean, have we not got that picture so we can all have a good laugh about it? Oh. I mean, honestly... He's a little bit like Boris Johnson in that a photographer always happens to be handy at these key moments in his rebranding exercise. But what I'll just quickly say is imagine this the other way round. If a female cabinet minister was caught groping and snogging a close uh, workmate, well, they would be toast. They would be toast. Yeah, Can I you agree. imagine I someone agree. like Liz Truss, God forbid, she's, you know, absolutely on the front line at the moment, just as Matt Hancock was yeah. on the front line. But if, if she was so dumb as to do anything like that, she'd be out of the job and out and, of and, politics. But, but, you know, with things like... I mean, we don't know that, that Matt Hancock set up for that photographer to take the picture of him coming out of serpent time. We don't know that. They just happen to be <laughs> just there. just happen to be lined up but, in focus. But do you think we would see a female <clears throat> politician behaving in, in the same way? Do you think that we would see a female politician coming out of the serpentine in her well, bikini? Well, look at time? Edwina Curry and John, uh, John Major. She waited until he was out of office. She waited years and years... Before 
before she wrote her autobiography and revealed that as a minister... Well, actually, she wasn't a minister at the time, she was an MP. She'd had an affair with a prime minister yeah. who was married, it's but she big, waited a dignified length. Slightly different scenario, though, mm. because they were caught and said... You know, one could argue that by openly talking about it, he's able to, to you know, get everyone... So that everyone knows exactly what happened and then everyone will just stop talking about but it. But, but do he it. doesn't have happened. to keep bringing it up. It's, the oh. it's not condemning him for having an affair. It's the timing of what was happening in our lives yes. and what we weren't allowed to do when he was doing what he was yeah. doing. For me, Which it's not shocking. the affair, because mm. these things do happen, and you're right. You know, who are we to say that we're Guys, perfect? guys, mm. guys. He just fell in love. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh it's right. the sick bag. <laughs>